today we're going to hear from the woman who had a best-selling cookbook um, on the list, I think, in Australia for well over 10 weeks. She's a regular com columnist for the Australian Women's Weekly now. She's the Today Show's regular cooking presenter. And I think a family hero who represents the life of many women who's going to show us all about how to save in the kitchen. Please welcome Julie Goodwin. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> it's a good view from up here. Now okay. we're going over here where Julie has a, an incredible table set up, I oh, might yeah. say. Julie, uh, how many kids do you have, Julie? I've got three teenage sons and they could eat for Australia. They're <laughs> very hungry people, so we, uh, we do make use of just about everything we've got now for you. you do, and you're going to show us today what to do with some leftovers. What are we cooking? I am. Well, I'm going to cook just some vegetable cro croquettes. And if you have a look at it, you'll see that it's, it's literally just leftover cooked vegetables that I've brought in. So it is, by the way. Oh. Yeah, cold spuds, the sort of stuff that you, you, know, you, you put into the fridge because you can't bear to throw things away and then you wait for it to go slimy so that you can feel okay about throwing it away. Well, this is, uh, this is just about using it before it goes slimy so you don't have to throw it away. And what I'm going to do today is talk about, you know, basically, we're, I mean, this is a brilliant day. We're talking about the, the big picture and policies and politics and we're also talking about the little picture and about how each one of us can, can be an activist in our own life without even having to be all that activistic, you know. It's, um, it's really just <laughs> simple stuff. So I'm going to talk about three things. One is waste, two is locality, and three is seasonality. Very, very simple things that if we just put them into our awareness and live consciously, as we spoke about, it's, it's going to make a really big difference. And I actually think that 20 bucks a week, which is the $1,000 that we're looking at saving, is uh, conservative. If you look at what your habits are and make some changes, I think you could save way more than $1,000 just on the food. So, And it's pretty important, I guess, coming up to Christmas too, when we're all tempted to go out and probably buy a lot more food than we'll end up eating. Absolutely, absolutely. Christmas is leftover city, so you, you sort of be, be a bit conscious about you know, what you're buying to start with and then how you use it and how you plan to use it in the days after Christmas. So these are just some cold... Sorry, Julie, but Kim's not wearing appropriate safety gear. There should always be an apron on when one is near a professional demonstrator of foodstuffs. <laughs> um, and this apron is from the New South Wales government's Love Food, Hate Waste campaign. Which is awesome. Great. Oh, I'm very right. happy to endorse the New South Wales government's <laughs> Love Food, Hate Waste. By the way... I should just tell you, if you go to the uh, Love Food Hate Waste website, it's fantastic. It's got some great tips up there, great photographs, just really good hints for how you can get rid of that slime in the refrigerator in the first place. <laughs> and right. uh, so make sure you all note that website down because it is fantastic. This is just potatoes in a potato ricer. If you haven't got one of these, do yourself a favour. They make the best mashed potatoes. So all I've got here is a couple of spuds. A couple of bits of corn. Corn's in season at the moment. It's absolutely beautiful at the moment, as are zucchinis and beans. So, there we go. So you're just mashing that potato with that? Yeah, just a bit of spud, a little bit of corn. So Our, our oil's smoking here. Is that all right? Um, yeah, look, oh, it'd be awkward, wouldn't it, if I set off the fire? Yeah, I was just wondering. So I might... <laughs> didn't bring my umbrella. I might turn that off for a moment. Okay. See, I know the about cooking, I could could tell play, that. Have it, couldn't it? So when we're talking about waste, I'm not just talking about the food that you buy that you sort of don't get around to cooking. Um, and I'm not just talking about the food that you cook and then you don't get around to eating. It's also about, um, you know, when you talk about animals, using cuts of animals that aren't so popular. So, I mean, not long ago, lamb shanks were the dog's food. And that's what... That's what people bought it for and they cost next to nothing. They became trendy and they put the price up. But um, there's plenty of things you can do with stuff like um, even chicken necks, which are still considered animal food. You take home, you saute them up and, and make them into beautiful stocks and soups and all sorts of things. So it's just thinking a little bit outside the box that you don't only need to buy the premium cuts of meat all the time, that sometimes the secondary cuts make really, really good food. So just a bit of corn in there. So Julie as well. I guess if you give up eating meat one day a week and just adopt a vegetarian meal and substitute, that's also a very good thing to be doing, isn't yeah, well, it? Well, you say vegetarian, I say budgetarian. It saves a lot of money if you... Um, if you truly, that's why all my vegetarian friends are so skinny. 
<laughs> well, I don't think meat makes you fat necessarily, but it certainly uses a lot of resources. It's tens of thousands of litres of water for one kilo of beef. So definitely, if you eat less meat, you are reducing. So look, I'm just going to try and cut and talk and not take a finger off. Um, no, please don't do that. Because that could get ugly. So the second thing that I want to talk to you about, the reason I'm doing this recipe is obviously because it's leftovers, but it also gets me to use these little darling little eggs which came from my darling little chickens. Now, you, you don't... How many chickens do you have? I've got six little, little chooks. Six chooks in the backyard. Yeah, don't Good ask me you. what kind they are. They're brown, that's all I know. Yep. And they have only just started laying eggs. And the reason I did that was because I did struggle a bit to find... Um, fresh eggs, but what I would encourage, not everyone can keep chickens, especially if you've got three dogs like me, it does get a bit busy sometimes, but just have a look around your local area um, to find, you know, people who produce their own eggs, or failing that, look for the ethical option in the supermarket, because really, it's, if, you, if you average it out over the egg, it's only a few cents more to buy eggs from happy, you know, ethically, ethically treated chickens. So... And you'll see when I crack those how beautifully yellow the yolks are and how, how just glorious they are. So the other th reason I'm doing this little recipe is because it's got breadcrumbs in it. And that's another one of my little sort of saving tips is that at the end of every loaf of bread, you know, the, the slice next to the crust that nobody wants to eat as well as the crust, I just chuck that into a bread bag. And it, instead of putting it into the bin, I just stick keep sticking those bits into the same bread bag in the freezer till I've got a full bag, whiz it up in the food processor and it's breadcrumbs and you stick that back in the freezer and it lasts forever. So that's uh, just another little tip. So into my potatoes. If that, that's just some onion, carrots, literally just some <laughs> leftover vegetables out of the fridge and stir it up. And my boys like this. It's, um, so are they happy to just eat a vegetarian meal? They are. I've got to make it pretty hearty vegetarian meal though, like big eggplant, um, cheesy eggplant bake. Usually my vegetarian meals do involve quite a lot of cheese because, uh, you know, <laughs> they're young men, they do love their meat. So a bit of salt and pepper actually. We've got to season, season everything. It's good for you. No, food's got to nourish your, your spirit as well as your body. So if you're denying yourself all the time and, uh, you know, I don't think that's good for you either. So I'm making a horrid mess here. I'm really sorry. Here's my beautiful little eggs. I think you're doing a great job. I can't stand having one person in my kitchen, let alone 600. <laughs> well, well, you know, like I say, it, it could get awkward if it doesn't work. It could be a bit embarrassing and I might have to ask you all not to tell. So... <laughs> Okay, so locality is the next thing I'm pretty big on. If you can't grow things yourself, try and find them as close to home as you possibly can because a carrot that's come from your local farmer's market has only travelled within the local area. A carrot that comes from the supermarket might have been trucked across the country, it might have, been, might have come from overseas. Um, so as local as you, as you can. It's and also old when you get it. It's disgraceful. It's disgraceful how old some of this stuff is. I, um, I, you know, I've got lots of stories about that kind of thing, how, how revolting some of that produce is by the time you get it. So I'm t I'm t I can't talk and do things at the same time. That's all right. You it's also, a, it's I know. It's that testosterone you were talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah, I know. It's it charges in, doesn't it? Yeah. Wicked stuff. Now, you also have a herb garden, I know, too, don't you? I've got, a, I've got a really big herb garden, and you don't actually need a yard. Can you see the colour of those eggs, aren't they? They're, yeah, they're beautiful. Really you don't lovely. really need a yard to have a herb garden. You can just grow them in pots or in cracks in the footpath. And that's one of my big bugbears, is that to buy herbs at the supermarket, it's like three bucks a bunch. They come in those ghastly plastic sleeves. Half of, half of it's dead already, and you throw, you throw most of it away. And because there's often a lot more in a bunch than what you need to yeah. use. So just being able to snip a little herb out of your garden is awesome. So I'm just And I live in an apartment, which is um, obviously means that sometimes I can't grow the veggie garden I'd like, but I do have a windowsill garden with herbs, and it works pretty well. Yeah, yeah. well, that's right. I mean, and, and it saves you a lot of money. And there's just something really nice about snipping your own little bit of herb. People were throwing away herbs when I was in a class 
an evening college class and they'd have a whole bunch of shallots. At the end of the evening, they'd throw the rest of the shallots in the bin and I'd take them home and I'd plant them in a pot. <laughs> She's the shallot thief. Awesome. <laughs> She's the shallot rescuer. Oh, is the shallot she rescuer, is. not the thief. Yeah, yeah. And I always use my leftover mint leaves in my gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. I've been no, thing about that leaf you were That in is a great or? environmental um, thing to do, is have a gin and tonic with some herbs in it. That's right. So, all right, I'm back. There's, there's another thing that I wanted to talk to you about, and it was seasonality. And this, to me, it's really at the heart of what I try and uh, talk to people about. If it's in season, then chances are where you live, then chances are it's more local, for a start. It's cheaper, way cheaper. And it's also fresher, it's more nutritious. I live on the central coast, just about an hour and a bit north of here, and it's an orchard country. So nearly every backyard has orange trees, lemon trees, and, and that's the, the foundation. It was an orchard farming community. And so it makes my blood boil when I go to the supermarket and there are oranges from the USA. Struggling Aussie farmers and they're shipping in oranges from the USA. And I ask why? And the reason is, because we want oranges all the year round. We don't say, let's have it as a treat in the winter. Let's have oranges in the summer too. As consumers, we're buying oranges in the summer. They don't grow here in the summer. They need to come from somewhere else. So it's about being conscious of what's available in season. I put it on my website every month. I put a list. I'm sure Love Food Hate Waste would have a, a list of seasonal stuff as well. And one thing that made me really furious, and Noni uh, mentioned it before, it was the very start of asparagus season, and I walked into the fruit shop. All, I went to all the fruit shops to try and find it so I could cook with it and put it on my website. And it was a late start to the season, so none of them had it. I don't know what's going on with this. But we've got another comment pen. while you sort the um, <laughs> And then, uh, and so I went into Coles to look for asparagus. There was a big sign up on the shelf that said, asparagus season is over, but you can still enjoy fresh asparagus from Peru. Mm. And I got... I was cross. I was cross. I, just, I wouldn't want to see Julie cross. I just nearly made Noni look like a choir girl. Yeah. I, I, I was really angry because for a start, it was the beginning of asparagus season and to give that misinformation to the public goes against everything that I believe in. It's about information. It is. And yeah. it's about that um, whole issue, I think, with buying any sort of produce. Ask the questions. No, well, look, I mean, the... the the end of that Peruvian asparagus story was I got cross and I went home and I wrote a blog about it and I lambasted Mr. Coles for giving us the, the incorrect information. And you ought to have seen this asparagus. It was disgusting. It was really thick, woody, cracked, old asparagus. And somehow the Asparagus Council of Australia got wind of it. There is such a thing as the Asparagus Council of Australia. I'm sure if they got a letter from Julie Goodwin, they'd be getting wind of it. Well, they let, me know, they let me know that the season was late in Australia and they sent me... All this asparagus, I swear to God. It was like that, you know, the never-ending packet of Tim Tams? I had the never-ending fridge of asparagus. And they posted it from Melbourne. And I'm telling you this because I ate asparagus, my God, we all did, for weeks. And it was still as fresh as a daisy after being posted from Melbourne and in my fridge. And that gives you an indication of just how crappy and old some of the produce is mm. that we're buying at supermarkets. So go local go seasonal and you'll get the very best produce. It won't just be good for the planet, it's good for your pocket and it's also excellent for your health. Well said. Now so, you've... Yeah. So this is... You've cooked up three of these beautiful... I have. ...little frittata so things So I, I hope you're not hungry because there's only three. Are they for me? <laughs> Certainly. So that's just my very, very simple vegetable croquettes. That's a lemon off the tree in my backyard. I just brought that so I could say that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but Good uh, on you, Julie. Look, it's, it's a real honour. I'm so thrilled to see so many people here. It's a wonderful initiative, this, and you really, truly don't have to start wearing a hessian sack and socks with sandals to save the earth. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with Thank you. Lovely. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much.